Welcome to the independent ANOVA tutorial. We'll start with the basic analysis of running an independent ANOVA. To run an independent ANOVA, we need a categorical independent variable with more than two groups and a dependent variable that's measured at the interval and ratio level. So in the current example, our independent variable is course section. So we have course section A, B, C, and D. And our dependent variable is test grade. And what we're interested in, in, one, in examining is whether test grades are influenced by course section. So we can see here the course sections right now uh, have their label. But if we click this, we can see their numerical value. And we have sections 1, 2, 3, and 4, or A, B, C, and D. So to run this, we're going to go to Analyze compare means one-way ANOVA. So similar to t-tests, we're going to put the course section, so the independent variable, down here on the factor list. And then in the de dependent variable, we're going to put our test one. So this is what we're interested in examining. So for contrasts and post hocs, uh, contrasts, we won't ever worry about that for this course. Uh, post hocs, I'll show you that shortly. But under options, we want to select the descriptive statistics and the homogeneity of variance test. And otherwise, we can leave everything as is for now. So we get our results here. Uh, so we have three tables. The first is our descriptive statistic table. So this gives us the descriptive statistics for each of our groups on their own, as well as the sample uh, on a whole. So we can see here that in section A, we have 50 students, B, 50 students, C and D, etc. We can see the means and standard deviations for uh, all four groups, as well as the standard error, uh, confidence, confidence intervals, and minimum and maximum. And then here on the bottom row, we have the data for the entire sample. Next, we have our homogeneity of variance test. So again, we're using Levine's uh, statistic to determine whether or not our variances are approximately equal in our four groups. So since this uh, test here is not significant, we can see that here since sig or p is much bigger than 0 0.05. Um, so since this is not significant, we could conclude that our variances are approximately equal. And if you look up here in the descriptive table, you'll see that that's pretty accurate because for each of our four groups, uh, the variances are pretty much identical. So they're all around 0.8. Uh, yes, the total variance is a little bit more. The total standard deviation is more. However, we aren't concerned with that. We're looking at the groups on their own. So since um, we have no issues with homogeneity of variances, no correction needs to be made, and we can look at our ANOVA table down here. So we can see that for 3 and 196 degrees of freedom, that our F is, our observed F is 1 point, or sorry, 116.57, which is much larger than the critical F uh, for 3 and 196 degrees of freedom. And we can see that here since our significance value is much smaller than 0 0.05. So assuming there are no issues with the variances, this would be what you need to do in order to run a, an independent ANOVA in SPSS without having looked at the post hocs. Next, we'll look at what to do if we have unequal variances. Okay, so let's say that we're interested in examining course section on test scores again, but this time we're going to have an issue with our variances, and essentially one of our groups or all of our groups are going to have unequal variances. So we're going to rerun the same analysis, um, except this time we are going to switch the dependent variable with, for test 2. Okay, so everything else can stay the same. We have our uh, contrast and post hocs, which we didn't touch. However, descriptives and homogeneity of variances tests will leave right here. So we click OK. And this time we get the same table. So we again have 50 people per group. These are the test scores. Um, however, this time when we look at the homogeneity of variances test, we noticed that um, we do have a problem since this value here is smaller than 0 0.05. So Levine's test is showing us that our, our variances are unequal within our groups. And if we look at the standard deviations, we can see that for the first three, the standard deviation is around 0.8. However, uh, for group D, it's around 1.3. So this is causing some problems, and it means that we can't actually interpret this ANOVA table here without making a correction first. 
So luckily it's very easy in SPSS. So we're going to close this, go back to our analysis window. Uh, we're going back to One Way ANOVA right here. And this time under Options, we're going to select this Welch correction right here. And what this will do is make a correction to our error term, or sorry, our degrees of freedom of our error term, which is going to give us a modified um, F ratio, which takes into account the unequal variance between the groups. So we click Continue, OK. And now everything uh, is about the same, except that we have an extra table down here. So again, same descriptive statistic table, same homogeneity of variances uh, test table here. So Levine's again, uh, nothing's changed. It's still significant. So we're actually going to skip this table here, and we're going to look at the robust tests of equality of means table. And we can see here that the Welch uh, test results are in this table. And what we have is an adjusted F ratio. So what this test does is takes a modified degrees of freedom. So instead of using 3 and 196 to uh, calculate the mean squares and then the ratio, we're actually using 3. So the model has not changed. However, the error degrees of freedom is different. So instead of having, instead of having 196, we have 107.84. And if you were to plug these values in and complete the ANOVA table on your own, you would get to 51.91, or SPSS does it for you automatically. So what we have here is an F for 3 and 107.84 degrees of freedom, uh, which is equal to 51.91. And for those degrees of freedom, this value is much larger than the critical value, uh, since again, this value here for the probability is much smaller than 0.05. So this would be the F that you would report, and you would have to indicate that because of an issue with homogeneity of variances, you had to use uh, the Welch's corrected F, and you reported these values instead. If you were to calculate your R square, so your um, estimate of effect size, uh, you would still use the same formula where you would take the sum of squares model, or between groups sum of squares, and divide it by the total, uh, even with unequal variances. The reason for this is because this correction is making a adjustment to the error term in the model and not the model and the total. So you can still use the original values here in this table to calculate your effect size. Finally, we'll look at our post hoc analyses. All right, so the first two examples showed us that in both cases, whether we're looking at test one or test two, we had differences somewhere between our groups depending on the course section. So since the uh, or an ANOVA analysis is an omnibus test, it means that we do know that there is a significant difference somewhere. Unfortunately, we don't know exactly where that significant difference is. So to determine which groups are actually different from each other, so which course uh, sections, we need to actually look at some post hoc analyses. So we'll start with looking at test one, so the post hoc analyses if we have equal variances, and then we'll look at test two afterwards. So clicking here, we're going to go back to compare means one way ANOVA. Again, the independent variable is going to be course section, and this time we'll look at the case where we had equal variances. So under options, we can keep descriptives, and um, we can keep the homogeneity variance test if you'd like, and that's it. And now under post hocs, we need to ask SPSS to do certain post hoc analyses. So since we have equal variances, um, we're going to actually select Chef A. So each of these is, are good for different reasons and depending on different cases of data. Um, for this course, we're always just going to use Chef A. If you're running these analyses in a more, um, I guess, official co uh, context, then please look up each of these tests and determine which is the best one for the data you have. However, for this course, if we have equal variances, we will use Chef A. And you can see here that SPSS has separated the two types of tests based on equal variances and unequal variances. So you can check that here, and we can leave the probability level at 0.05. So it's going to look for differences that are at least that big. If you wanted to make it more strict, you could put 0.01, and it'll look for even larger differences between the group means. However, we can leave it at the default of 0.05. So we'll click Continue and OK, and we can look at our output. 
So the first three tables have stayed the same. We have our descriptives, we have our Levine's test showing us that we do not have a problem with our variances, and then we have our ANOVA analysis here. And since there is a significant difference somewhere, and we know that based on this, we can actually look at the post hoc analyses. So what this does is it compares the means of each group. So A with B, A with C, A with D, and then does B with A, B with C, B with D, and C with A, etc. And it looks at the mean difference. So this here, these values here are A minus B, A minus C, A minus D. And what it's looking at is whether this difference is large enough to be significantly different. And we can tell right here whether or not it is significantly different or large enough to be based on the significance value here. So what this test is telling us is that there is no difference between A and B. However, there is a difference between A and C, we can see that there, and A and D. Uh, so again, this is the invert here, so A and B there, this is B and A, so it makes sense this is the same. B with C, is no, there's no difference. B with D, no difference as well. And then looking at... C with A, we can see there's a difference. C with B, which is opposite of up here, no, or there is a difference. And then C with D, again, we see no difference here. And then this last one is pretty much a replication of all the other comparisons we've looked at. So basically, you just want to make sure you've looked at the comparisons between each group and see where there are differences. Um, what this table suggests overall is that A and B are the same and C and D are the same. So if we want to interpret that, we would go up and look at our descriptive statistics, and what we see are that A and B are about the same, and C and D are about the same. And looking at the values, just eyeballing them, you can see that that makes sense. The mean for group A is 5.94, and then B is 5.86. Those are approximately the same, and the post hoc comparisons confirm that. Looking at C, we see that um, 8.08 .08 and 8 are identical, pretty much identical here as well. So again, no difference between the two. However, A and B are significantly different than C and D. So what we can conclude here is that the averages in section C and D are higher than A and B. And that would be how you interpret the post hoc analyses. And then this last table here, uh, you don't really need to look at it, except that it's basically just suggesting um, that there might be a different grouping that makes more sense of your independent variable and basically what it has identified is that A and B are really one group and C and D are one group which makes sense based on the values we obtained. So let's close this and now we will look at an example using or where we don't have equal variances. So if we go back to compare means one way ANOVA, we'll take test one out, we'll put test two back in, um, we will under options add that Welch's correction and under post hocs, we're no longer going to look at Chefe. We want to look at Games Howell. Okay, so if we don't have equal variances, there are four options here. And for this course, we'll use this one. Again, like with the um, the uh, post hoc analyses for equal variance and uh, tests, there are different reasons and different conditions that determine which test is the best. Uh, again, if you're doing I guess you could say real research or something that's not for this course, you should look up and see which one makes the most sense. However, for this course, you can use Games Howell. So we'll click continue, and here we can click OK, and we'll get our results. So this time again, we have the analysis here. This uh, Levine's test is still significant, which means that we should not report this F, but we'll report our Welch's adjusted F. And then looking at the post hoc analyses, we now see we're looking at the Games Howell analyses. So again, it's the same thing. We're comparing A with B, A with C, A with D, B with A, B with C, B with D, etc. And if we just scroll down looking here at all the difference or the, uh, the probability associated with each uh, mean comparison, we see that A is different than all the other means, B is different than all the other means, and then C is different than everything but D. And then we see the same thing here as well. D is different than everything but C. So if we go back up and look at our results. We can see here that 6.12 is significantly lower than 7.04. And 7.04 is significantly lower than 7.98. However, 7.98 is not significantly lower than 8.2. So what this means is that these two 
were pretty close. However, uh, these ones were lower than everything else. So the means in sections C and D were higher than B, and then B was higher than A. And again, um, sorry, and uh, that is everything you need to interpret the post hoc analyses.